I've assembled a list of the top 10 watches that I would love to have in my collection. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Watch Closet, I'm COE33, CO for short, and guys, I think it's safe to say that I'm cuckoo for watches. If you enjoy watch collecting content as much as I do, help me grow this channel and appease those algorithm overlords by subscribing and ever so gently polishing that like button. Before we get into the video, let's do a wristwatch check. I've been wearing my Invicta 1953 for a solid week now so that I can do a full review on it. Really nice watch with sparing use of text on the dial vintage proportions, and a stainless steel bracelet. I've been collecting watches since I was 12 years old when my parents brought me home this Doc Martens. They went to vacation in London and they brought this home and they gifted it to me. And ever since I've had a real passion for learning about and collecting these objects that I guess some people will now consider to be antiquated. But I love everything about watches, the mechanics, the engineering, the artistry, the design, and the self-expression that can be achieved from wearing a watch, from the big G-Shocks to the smaller dress watches. Each piece that we wear on our wrist says something about us. And I've come to realize over the years that my tastes in watches are somewhat eclectic. I find joy in watches of all types, from inexpensive novelties and homages to high-end luxury pieces. For me, it's not about the status that a certain watch or brand may provide, but how that makes me feel and how does it fit into my lifestyle. So with all that said, why don't we take a look at my ultimate watches wish list? All these picks are watches that I'd love to add to my personal collection someday, starting with number 10. The Longines Hydro Conquest 39mm with the black sunray dial. Love this watch, guys. The snowflake handset. The Arabic numerals, the kind of large proportioned Arabic numerals there at the 12 o'clock, the 6 o'clock, and the 9 o'clock. The nicely proportioned crown with the crown guards. A really good finishing. I love everything about this watch. Not to mention Longines is such a great brand with good heritage and good build quality. So now they have a bunch of different variants of this watch. They have the blue one I quite like as well. But something about the simplicity of the Sunray black dial I just love. And that's why this watch comes in at number 10. Coming in at number 9 is a watch that, oh boy, would I love to have, but it keeps getting more and more expensive. The Seiko Ripley. Guys, this watch. Now, as a kid of the 80s who grew up watching Alien and Aliens and all that stuff, this is a watch that um, I absolutely would love to have. Aliens is in my top 5 list as far as movies of all time. I absolutely love that movie. I watch it all the time. And this is the watch that Ripley wore in Aliens, and James Cameron did a great job of picking out this watch. I think it fits the aesthetic of the movie perfectly, and there's a bunch of different variants of this watch as well. It's got a very kind of um, almost 70s kind of car racing vibe to it. It actually was made for car racing. That's why there's those big pusher buttons on the chronograph, so that the race car drivers could push those buttons with their gloves on. And what a great chronograph. I love everything about it. That bracelet, that dial, the giant oversized pusher buttons, which, you know, it's funky, but how cool is that? You know, they're not cheap. They're going for quite a pretty penny these days on eBay, but hopefully one day I can add one of these Seiko Ripley's to my collection. Moving on to watch number eight and another one that I've been pining over for quite a while, the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date Automatic with that green dial, the bronze case, and the bronze bracelet. Wow, what a beauty. Gosh, guys, I love this watch. Everything about it, the ornate handset, that uh, pointer that points to the date, thus the name, pointer date there with a little touch of red. Um, really nice dial with the uh, Arabic numerals and uh, the kind of the fancy bezel there with that beautiful, rich bronze bracelet, that kind of large crown. This is such a looker. And Oris is another one of those brands. I don't have any Oris in the collection. And um, I would love to change that. I really want to add one of these to my collection soon. And this one with the green dial, this is the one that I would choose. Moving on to watch number seven and the first vintage watch that makes the list. The 60s icon, the Bolova Accutron Space View. Whoa, I would love to have one of these guys. What a funky, cool watch. Being able to see all the inner workings of the watch there on the dial. And um, just at the time when this came out in the 60s, this watch was really ahead of its time. Bolivo was pushing boundaries in the 60s, and their use of the tuning fork in this watch really was revolutionary. Such a cool piece. 
And you can get these on eBay for a fairly affordable. You can actually get a nice example for, at the time of recording this video, about $600, five, $600, something like that. And for a good running, like good, nice example, the fancy lugs and just the, the proportions of this watch, the red on the seconds hand, everything about it. This is a really cool watch. I need to get this sooner than later. This is, has to happen and I can't wait to have this in my watch box. Moving on to number six on my wish list of watches, and it's the Grand Seiko, the spring drive with the pink dial, the SVG A413. Wow, guys, what an absolute beauty. Look at that pink dial. I mean, I would make an exception as far as pink for this watch just because it's so beautiful. It's not generally a color that I gravitate towards, but when I see it on this dial, I fall in love with it. It's one of the most beautiful dials I think I've ever seen, and Grand Seiko, Guys, I've wanted a Grand Seiko forever. I mean, just the the amount of watch that you get for the price point. Now, they're, they're not cheap. They're expensive. But you're getting finishing on a level that rivals just about any brand, any watchmaker in the world. And I love Japanese watches. I love everything about Grand Seiko. And this watch just screams to me. And that spring drive movement, how cool is that? I would love to have a spring drive movement in my collection. If I make one, you know, if I can make one change with this watch, maybe get rid of that power indicator, that power reserve indicator there on the dial. But that doesn't detract from this being an absolute stunning watch. And it's in titanium too. Another thing that I love, I love a titanium bracelet. Nice and lightweight, great proportions, and just all around a stunner. And yeah, the Grand Seiko, the Shunbun, <laughs> I think is the nickname of this watch. Is that right? The Shunbun? <laughs> the Shunbun? I don't know. But I know I love this watch. And that's why it had to make the list. Moving on to number five on the list and another vintage piece, the Tudor Prince Oyster Date. Now, when I think of Tudor, I go straight to the Prince Oyster Date. These are such cool watches, guys. I like the small dimensions of this watch, the classic vintage stylings. Everything about this, I would get this over a modern Tudor all day long. And it's just, it's so classic. It's got the stick indices, the just the clean hand stack there, minimal text on the dial, Tudor Prince Oyster date, rotor self-winding. And you got the date window there, nicely proportioned crown. I like the case, everything about it. This is a real winner. And what a cool watch this would be to have in the collection. And you can get these fairly affordable. I mean, they're not cheap by any means, but you can get a nice example of this at a fairly affordable price point. And I hope one day to have one of these tutors in my collection. It's just an awesome piece. Moving on to the fourth watch on my wish list. And guys, I said that I have some eclectic tastes, and this one falls into that category. And this is the cheapest watch on the wish list. So I need to pick this thing up. I don't know why I don't have it yet. The Seiko 60th Anniversary Limited Edition with the Silver Dial. Guys, I'm a huge retro gaming fan. I've got multiple game rooms in my house. I have a huge Sega Genesis collection. I have a gaming YouTube channel that I've had for years. And um, I love everything Sega. So when I think of great watch brands and my favorite video game company coming together, and then all of a sudden you have the Seiko Sega watch, the fact that I don't have this yet is kind of crazy. It is a quartz watch, which is, you know, that's kind of a bummer. I wish it was an automatic, but I don't care, guys. I need to pick this up. It says Sega on the dial. It's a Seiko. That's all that matters. Enough said. We're getting down to it, guys. The final three watches on my wish list, and these are some heavy hitters. These are expensive. These watches, you know, they would be hard for me to scrape together the cash to buy. It's within the realm of reason. Actually, all the watches on my wish list are watches that I think I could realistically buy one day. I purposely left off watches that were never going to happen. <laughs> the watches that were so expensive that it would be impossible for me to ever afford. But um, these watches, you know, as I said, it wouldn't be easy to afford. But I think I can make it happen, and I hope I do because these are uh, some pretty sweet watches that we're coming up to. And number three, guys, is the Jezure Le Coute Reverso, the tribute mono face with the small seconds and that red wine dial. Oh, wow. What a beauty, guys. These Reversos, you know, I'm sure a lot of you know, they were created so that polo players could protect the face of their watch by being able to turn the face of the watch over and protect it. And um, how cool would that be to have, to be able to kind of, flip your watch face 
over to look down and look at that beautiful dial. Is that not one of the most beautiful red dials you've ever seen? And just the classic proportions, you're getting an incredibly made watch. Ginger Lacoute, the watchmaker's watchmaker, as they say, beautiful. Everything about this watch, I absolutely love. And hopefully, one day, I will have one of these watches. Moving on to watch number two, and a watch that's really important to me and my history with watches. And that's a vintage Patek Philippe Calatrava, the one with the Roman numeral indices, the yellow gold case. It's got the hobnail dial. Everything about this watch is just simplicity and classic dress watch design. And I love it. Patek Philippe, of course, one of the great watch brands. And the reason this is a watch that I would love to have is that this is a watch that I used to enjoy viewing and playing with as a child. My stepfather was a businessman, and he was gifted one of these Patek Philippe Calatravas when he was doing business with a um, gentleman in Hong Kong who he was doing business with. This was a gift that he received. So my stepfather wore this watch. I'm not sure what the actual reference number is, but I know it's the yellow gold, it's the Calatrava, and it's the one with the hobnail dial. And, he, you know, I remember, like, looking at this box and opening up this Patek Philippe box and looking at this Calatrava as a young child and just being blown away by it. And, of course, you know, this is a very expensive watch, and my stepfather took great care of it because he knew how valuable it was, and it was an incredibly generous gift. And for me to be able to get one of these in my own personal collection really would represent kind of a milestone in a full circle. And um, I hope to uh, achieve that goal. I would love to have one of these. And uh, I just need to make it happen, guys. Start saving and get one of these beautiful dress watches. All right, guys, here we are. The number one watch on my wish list. What will it be? Guys, when I first saw this watch, I fell in love. And this is probably the most, um, oh, it's a pretty popular watch as far as in the YouTube watch community. I see this watch talked about a lot. And I know why, because it's just an absolute stunner, guys. The Cartier Santos, in particular, the medium without the date window. I love absolutely everything about this watch. Now, of course, Cartier, an historic brand. The Santos really is the first ever pilot's watch. And it's an important watch historically, horologically, and they've kept it true to kind of the, the vintage aesthetic. Cartier does this style so well, and it just it screams class. And I really like the updates that they've made with the new Cartier Santoses with the, the fancy um, bracelet with the different... Uh, you can just basically click a button, the links pop out, and you can resize it real easy. And there's lots of like quality of life features on this watch that kind of take it and elevate it to a whole new level. What a great watch from the proportions and the design and super classy. I, I hope to get one of these. I'm worried that this is going to like be one of those watches that the price starts skyrocketing on. So I kind of would like to get this sooner than later. And ever since I first saw it, it's a watch I've been pining over. So yeah, the Cartier Santos guys, what a beauty. All right, guys, that's my wish list of the top 10 watches that I'd love to add to my collection. Hopefully someday I'll have some, if not all, of those beauties in my watch box. I'm posting new videos every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can count on that. It's like clockwork. Follow me with my watch collecting adventures over on Instagram at Cuckoo for Watches. I'm live streaming on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday. Follow me over there for wrist checks and retro gaming at COE33. And if you're enjoying the content, be sure to watch this video the current state of the watch collection for 2022. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep your watches wound and your sapphires polished.